This is a tutorial to demonstrate the current state of iPlug 2, including integration of the Faust programming language. The plan is to release iPlug 2 publicly by the end of the year, and one of the headline new features is the ability to make web audio modules. WAMs are a new web-based audio plugin format that aims to be the equivalent of VST for the web. So in order to introduce iPlug 2, I'm going to start with a very basic project which I'm going to augment with some Faust code. When you check out iPlug from the Git repository, you get a folder structure something like this. And part of the work I've done on iPlug is to maintain a very well-defined folder structure. So it means that when you want to make a project, you don't have to worry about getting everything in the right place or configuring your Xcode project very precisely, making a new project and doing all of the stuff that takes a very long time. This is the top level folder and in there you've got a folder called examples. In there you have templates and there is a duplication script which is a Python script which will allow you to rapidly make a new project. So for example, I could say duplicate iPlug effect my new plugin and then give it a manufacturer name and that has now created a new folder with everything set up ready to build a plugin and it's done a find and replace on all of the files and inside the files where it used to say iPlug effect it now says my new plugin. So the idea is I can load something like this up and immediately compile one of these plugin formats. Now this tutorial is about using Faust with iPlug so I've made an example already with a few things set up to make the tutorial run smoothly. Likewise, I've duplicated iPlug effect and uh, I've got a project called iPlug Faust example. In the project, we've got uh, an Xcode workspace, a Visual Studio solution, um, and we have some source code files for our plugin. So let me open up the Xcode workspace. So one of the things that I really like about iPlug is that the implementation for a plugin is extremely concise. Here we've got the interface and this is a very, very minimal plugin without a GUI at the moment. I have a single method process block and the plugin constructor. In the implementation file you can see inside the process block it is just copying uh, inputs to outputs looping over the samples in the block and doing the same thing for each channel. There's one more important source code file and that's config.h and this has a lot of preprocessor macros which configure properties of the plugin so whether it's an instrument whether it has a user interface um, various other things to do with different formats so there's stuff for Pro Tools and stuff for VST3 stuff for a standalone app. Anyway let's see what happens here I'm building the VST2 version it's the 64-bit version and I'm launching Reaper. So here we've got a Reaper project with uh, some pink noise on a track Here's our plugin, and we've got no parameters and no user interface. So now I'm going to integrate some DSP using Faust into my iPlug C++ project. I've got some hidden code down here, um, including a new process block function and uh, a couple of other methods.
So I've got on reset, and that's going to get called when we need to set the sample rate. So, for example, when the DAW starts playback. And on param change happens when a parameter changes. I've got this Faust file up here, and I am integrating the Faust code into my iPlug C++ class using this preprocessor macro Faust block. And what this does is it assigns a variable that when we're building a debug version of our plugin is going to use the Faust just-in-time compiler to convert this Faust DSP file into a kind of bytecode that can be executed on the fly. When we build a release version, it's going to use the statically compiled C++ code. So this gives us a way of switching between the uh, just-in-time uh, compiled version and the C++ version. So let's build this and see what happens. Okay, it's built successfully. Now, there's a few things I've added to the code in this implementation file. I'm initializing my uh, Faust block. I'm calling create iPlug parameters. Now that's going to link the parameters defined in the Faust DSP file using H sliders and things like that. It's going to link those to the plugins parameters. Next, I call compile CPP, which is going to basically call the static Faust compiler uh, to convert this into a C++ um, file that can be included when I build a release version. Lastly, I call set auto recompile to true, and that implements a file watcher which is going to look at this Faust file and any time I change this code it's going to automatically update the uh, well it's going to JIT compile and it's also going to update the, the C++ code. So in my new process block function I call through to the uh, Faust block process block function um, and I set the sample rate when we reset and I call through the on param change. Let's have a listen. So you can hear we've now got a uh, through zero flanger which is a stereo effect and if I uh, modify some parameters here We can hear that uh, that's all working with the Faust code. Now, the cool thing about this JIT compilation stuff is that I can go and I can modify the code here. So let me uh, let's uh, zero the right-hand channel. Now that's just compiled. You can see we've now got a mono effect. can even do it whilst the audio is running. So now I've got some interesting DSP going on. It's time to build a user interface. I've got some hidden code here where I have declared a user interface. Okay, so iPlug2 comes with uh, an updated set of controls and we've got controls based on bitmaps. So this is a, a bitmap knob control and in order to use that I need to load in a bitmap. Uh, I've also got a vector-based knob control and a vector-based slider control and another bitmap control. Another thing that's been updated is it's much easier to 
lay out uh, a UI by dividing up the bounds of your graphics context. So all of this stuff is going to lay out my controls on a grid. So you can see it's really uh, a very small amount of code to create a UI. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so we've got uh, a control for each of these parameters. Now, we've created our UI, we've created our DSP. Now we want to create a web audio module version. So I could build lots of desktop plugins here. Instead, I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to go to the scripts folder. And there I have a shell script called make dist-web. Now hopefully this will produce a web audio module version of the same plugin. So that's exactly the same plugin running as a web page. Another major feature of the new version of iPlug is support for Audio Unit version 3. Audio Unit version 3 is a nice new format that allows you to do plugins that run on iOS as well as on desktop. So I can take exactly the same code here, maybe minus the GUI for the time being, and I can build it for my iPad and I'm going to run it in GarageBand. <laughs> 